The moment remains one of the most searing and hopeful events of the 20th century. On television, the images inspired the world. In Berlin, the night changed lives. Many people coming from the east to the west, and we were going into the opposite direction, and there was this white line. Florian Schmidt was then a student in West Berlin. He was one of thousands of Germans that charged the wall that night, ushering in a new Europe, almost by accident. For me, in this moment, it was also a bit of adrenaline and, and like danger. And in the days after, you really uh, only realized how historic this moment was. Nothing was the same. 30 years on, you can just wander back and forth. Scattered remains of the wall also snake through the city, prompting the constant question from visitors, is this east or is this west? Yet the story still inspires, as does a memorial marking Germany's peaceful revolution and the lives senselessly lost before it arrived. I think it's a very peaceful, lovely place to be when you come in here, but this is always the reminder of what did happen. Let's hope it never happens again. The darker side of life in communist East Germany, the so-called German Democratic Republic, or GDR, has not been forgotten. Berlin's Stasi Museum documents the abuses of the once feared East German secret police. You had always the feeling when you were here that um, they were watching you. So it's a very repressive regime. Yet with time, call it nostalgia, call it curiosity, there's also growing interest in what it was like to actually live there. At Berlin's GDR Museum, visitors can test drive East Germany's ubiquitous clunker, the Trabant, experience life in a communist flat, or just laugh at the weirder aspects of living in the GDR. Besides all these um, serious and negative side of this social, socialist dictatorship, there was a normal life and people got used to living in such a state and they had good lives and not um, when faced with repre repressions every day. This was the minority, a very important minority, but you also have to tell the story of the majority. In these dueling interpretations, say observers, lies a deeper truth. Thirty years after the fall of the wall, Berlin is unified, but East and West Germany are still strangers. So there is that element. Uh, I think there is still an element of humiliation, uh, whereby uh, a lot of East Germans vis-a-vis -vis West Germany or Central Europeans vis-a-vis -vis Western Europe uh, point to the fact that uh, despite the enormous effort that they have made, they're still somehow uh, uh, being treated as second-class Europeans or second-class uh, Germans, that they're still not quite there. Recent polls found more than half of Germans, 53 percent, believe their democracy is in danger, a result of rising nationalism in the country's east. Yet East Germans' faith in their government is also shaken, a reflection of lagging economic prosperity. It all ties back to that moment in 89. After the party, the cleanup has been long and hard. Yet those who were there admit that while mistakes were made, Germans still made the right choice, ultimately the only choice. When you really think of how it was used to be here, it's just a step that had to happen that was 100% right. Some things had been done wrong, but in the end it was right. Thirty years on, the fall of the wall is still a moment to celebrate but with room for reflection for those still caught in its shadow. Charles Maines for VOA News, Berlin.